All right, so today we're going to look at creating a couple of VLANs on a FortiGate, uh, as well as allowing those two VLANs to talk to each other uh, by means of using a firewall rule. Uh, we are on a FortiGate 60E. This is my home lab, and this is version 6.2.1, though this process is relatively the same, uh, going back quite a few revisions now, actually. Um, so the reason I'm starting this whole video series, this is video one, is uh, a lot of people um, feel that network segmentation and VLANs and such uh, are, are difficult to understand. Uh, the reality is they're actually very easy to understand once you see it and it's explained in a way uh, that makes sense. So I'm trying to do that here. Uh, I will be doing various videos, mainly on Fortinet products, um, of different features and things that you can use. I'm trying to do these very short uh, and one topic at a time. So today uh, we're going to do VLANs. So as you can see off to the right, I created a checklist here uh, that kind of shows the whole process step by step, more or less, um, to give you something to look at uh, or screen cap without having to watch the whole video uh, or go through it. So without further ado, here we are uh, on a 4860E. We are in the Network Interfaces tab. Uh, which is showing all of the interfaces uh, broken off the 60E here. Uh, for the purposes of this video, we are going to be mainly focusing on internal 3, video trunk, and as you can see, I have it selected. It shows the port selected up here uh, on the FortiGate as well. Uh, the rest of this is things for my home lab, uh, but again, we're going to be mainly focusing on this trunk. So what is a trunk, right? We're selecting a trunk port. Uh, it, a trunk in this sense just means that we're going to take multiple VLANs and we're going to send them to another device. So uh, a receiving switch perhaps might need VLANs 100 and 200. This trunk here would serve that purpose. So let's say you wanted to create a trunk. You know that you have multiple VLANs that you want to send down to a switch. and You want that switch to break those VLANs out. Okay. So you're just going to pick whatever port you want. It could be port four, five, six. It, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and basically you're gonna select the port you want here, like it says in the first step, and then you're gonna create a new interface. Once you're in this tab, you're going to fill in this information, interface name, could be VLAN 100, etc. cetera. Uh, I already have these two filled out. So we're, we have VLAN 100 and 200. Uh, if you were the, to fill those in, this is what it would look like. So interface name was VLAN 100. It's using the interface port internal 3. It's tagged with VLAN 100. I'll go through that in a moment. Uh, and then this is the network that it's using. And that's really as simple as it is uh, as far as setting up a new VLAN on a FortiGate off of a switch port. Uh, there, obviously, there's a lot of other things that you can do here, but for main purposes, if you're looking to start on VLANs or test something out, this is sufficient to get the idea. Uh, I do have ping enabled on administrative access. All that does is allow us to ping the gateway of this subnet uh, from the device. So if you have a device on this network, you generally want to be able to ping the gateway. It's an internal network. There's no harm in that. And it gives you some sort of test for connectivity that the end device is able to talk back to the firewall. That's why I have ping enabled. So you'd fill this information in just as it is here, and you'd click OK. Well, you just created a VLAN off of this trunk port, right? Generally, you want more than one VLAN. That's the reason most people are doing network segmentation. So you create another one. Create new interface, same thing, only this time VLAN 200. VLAN 200 has a different network, OK? You'd click OK, and now you would have this. You would see two VLANs. So you'd have VLAN 100, VLAN 200. All right, great. You have two different networks, etc. What does that mean? This is where people get lost, right? So I've created this extremely detailed paint diagram to walk you through it. As funny as it is, it actually makes sense. So you have your FortiGate here, and you have port 3, like we just created, right? You are going to tag VLANs 100 and 200, because those are your tagged VLANs here. So on this switch, that's the next hop in this network. 
on this port, whatever port that is, could be port 117, doesn't really matter. Whatever port you choose, you're going to tag VLANs 100 and 200. What that tells the switch is, okay, I understand VLANs 100 and 200 up here on the 40 gate are tagged coming from this cable that's coming into my switch port. Right? So let's say this is switch port 1. You tag VLAN 100 and 200 on switch port 1 on your switch. The switch now understands VLAN 100 and 200. The switch now knows what to do with VLANs 100 and 200. It knows that if it gets a packet tagged with VLAN 100 or 200, or gets any kind of communication or packet coming from an untagged uh, device, it knows where to send that information back up to the firewall. Okay? So, great. The switch understands that I have VLANs 100 and 200. Well, how do I use those? Right? So come over here to these ports. I've created a couple examples here. We have the dumb PC that says, what is a VLAN? PCs generally don't know what a VLAN is. They can in some specific use cases. But this could be a phone, could be a computer, could be a laptop, right? Generally, those things aren't tagging a VLAN. Now, if you're doing a phone where the internet is passing through the phone to a desktop, then you would look at tagging. But in this case, in this example, I'm using an untagged VLAN to a PC, right? So we're going to untag VLAN 100 on this port because this dumb PC right here doesn't understand what a VLAN is. You have no tag of VLAN 100 on this PC. The PC just wants to talk to the interwebs. So you untag VLAN 100 on this switch port and boom, this PC will now have internet, assuming it has an IP address assigned to this network, which in this case would be 2020.21 slash whatever in the 24 range you want it to be. And it would be able to now come back into the switch. The switch would say, oh, I know what to do with that packet. And it will send it back up to the FortiGate. And hopefully you will have configured the FortiGate to be able to talk out to the internet. Maybe that'll be my next video. Now on the flip side over here, you have vCenter, right? vCenter is so ready for VLANs. vCenter loves VLANs, right? So we're going to tag VLAN 200 on the switch port that's connected to, into vCenter, right? So now vCenter knows that it has VLAN 200 and it's tagged and it's ready to give it to all these hungry VMs over here that really want to talk to the internet, right? So let's say you got 10 VMs in there, right? You would now untag VLAN 200 on these 10 VMs. Those 10 VMs are going to talk back to vCenter and say, hey, vCenter, we're on tag 200. vCenter says, oh, I know what to do with you. Sends it back to the switch. The switch now knows what to do with that. Sends it to the FortiGate, and the FortiGate sends it out to the internet. Simple, kind of, but you get the idea. So what do you do next? Why is this helpful, right? Everyone keeps telling you to use VLANs. Why do you care? Why is network segmentation important? Well, if I'm user on this PC, if I don't have network segmentation, I'm in the same network, I can talk to all these VMs over here in vCenter freely, right? There's nothing stopping me. Well, now there's something stopping me. Now the traffic has to go through the firewall to be able to talk, right? So in this example, the orange line is communication coming from vCenter. Right? So here's a VM in vCenter. This VM wants to talk to this PC. Right? This VM's path is not directly from the VM to the PC. This VM's path is now this orange line. It's going to go back through vCenter. It's going to go into the switch. The switch is going to send it back up to the firewall. Well, now you have this red line here. This is a firewall rule. Right? The firewall says, hey, you're allowed to go talk to that PC. Or, hey, you're not allowed to go talk to that PC. So let's assume that you do have a firewall rule in place, which we're going to create in a moment, uh, and it allows it to talk. The firewall will now take this blue line and say, okay, it's out here to the switch. The switch will say, here you go, and now it's talking to the PC. Without a rule in place, that would just die after the orange line. It would get to the firewall, the firewall would say, nope, and it can't talk to the PC. What does that do for you? Right? Okay, ransomware. 
some user comes in with a USB stick, plugs in their PC, PC gets owned, ransomware, right? It starts to spread everywhere. Well, if there's no rule for that user to be able to talk to this VLAN that vCenter and all of its you know, servers are sitting on, that ransomware won't make it there because it can't talk to it. That is the importance of network segmentation. And that can go down you know, way, way beyond. So this firewall rule that I made in the example, right? You have your two VLANs, okay? That's no good without a rule. So these two VLANs exist, they're independent. They can have different devices on them, but those devices can't talk yet. We need a rule to allow these to talk. Okay, so we're gonna come over here into IPv4 policy. And I created a rule here for VLAN 100 to be able to initiate traffic to VLAN 200. It's fairly straightforward. The naming scheme helps a lot. Uh, I use this notation, so VLAN 100 wants to talk to VLAN 200. If you follow this notation on your firewall rules, it, lets it makes it a lot easier to keep things organized, even though it's redundant, because the rule has it in there itself, but the name just makes it easier to reference. So if I want to come from VLAN 100, then my incoming interface, where the traffic is originating from, that's incoming, is going to be VLAN 100. And it would really like to go to VLAN 200. So that means that the outgoing interface needs to be VLAN 200. So you have a packet originating from a device on VLAN 100 and it's going to VLAN 200, right? Now the source could be all, which would mean anything in VLAN 100 can talk to VLAN 200, or you could specify things. Right, so let's say I just wanted my domain controller to be able to talk to VLAN 200. This is where you can get that granularity. We're gonna leave it all for simplicity's sake. Well, let's say I want anything on VLAN 100 to be able to talk to a single server on VLAN 200. So I have VLAN 100, all devices coming from VLAN 100 are able to talk to the destination of VLAN 200, but only the domain controller. Now you've created VLAN 100 where all these user PCs are, and they have the ability to talk to the server VLAN, but only to the domain controller, which is something that generally will need to happen, right? So now the domain controller is able to talk to those client PCs, but the other servers that are sitting on VLAN 200 are still protected uh, from the client PCs. You can do scheduling, right? So we're gonna do always generally is what you're gonna look at until you start getting very granular. And then you can even uh, do this by service. So if you had an FTP server, right, you could specify the FTP service. I'm gonna flip this back to all, just for simplicity's sake. Uh, the rest of these things, I think I'll go over those in additional videos, uh, but in general, for communication purposes, this is all you need uh, for a rule. It's coming from VLAN 100, it's going to VLAN 200. These are the items in VLAN 100 that you would like to be able to talk out. And these are the items in VLAN 200 that you would like it to be able to talk to. And that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. Um, it does take a little while, but once you kind of do a couple of these and you create a couple VLANs and you create a rule and then you trunk those VLANs down to your switch and test the um, firewall rules and see the communication happening and maybe disable the fire, fire, firewall rule, sorry, and see the communication cease, uh, you'll start to see the importance uh, of doing this and, and why it matters. Um, so until uh, we meet again, which will hopefully be soon uh, in my next video, I hope you all have a great day.